I'm now going to continue my video series on FASB statement number three by reading off the following and letting you guys do some research on this, okay? Let's return to paragraph 25 of APB opinion number 28. After paragraph 25 refers to par to paragraph 26 of APB Opinion 9, this paragraph states that any financial statements that were previously issued must be restated because of a change in reporting uh, in the reporting entity. Does this paragraph give you an example of the reporting entity? Of course it doesn't, but let's go on. Then this paragraph references a couple of paragraphs from APB Opinion number 20. Which paragraphs does this reference? Okay, well, Let's go to paragraph 34 of APB Opinion 20. Yeah, this is really long stretched out here. Paragraph 34 of APB Opinion number 20 states that the Accounting Principal Board has made a conclusion. What's this conclusion? Well, the conclusion focuses on accounting changes. These accounting changes create financial statements. So are these statements in a relation to the same reporting entity? Apparently they aren't because this paragraph references paragraph 12 of APB Opinion 20. You are welcome at this point to read paragraph 12 of APB Opinion 20. I'll say that again. Paragraph 12 of APB Opinion 20. Go ahead and read that and go on. And trust me, I can wait. If I can wait, so you, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so let's go back to paragraph 34 of APB Opinion number 20. If these accounting changes generate financial statements that are now the statements of a different reporting entity, these accounting changes should be reported by restating the financial statements of all prior pre periods presented. This would show financial information for the new reporting ent entity. Does this paragraph illustrate the different reporting ent entity? Of course not. Why would it? Does this paragraph show illustrations of, re of restated financial statements? Huh. You'd think they would, but no, of course not. Let's move on to paragraph 35 of APB Opinion 20. This particular paragraph discusses the subject of disclosure. It states that the financial statements of the period of a change in the reporting industry. Or not industry, entity. I will stop right there. This paragraph doesn't show any financial statement illustration. It doesn't specify the period of the change. It doesn't clearly define what the reporting entity is referring to. Okay? So at this point, you may be completely lost to the text. Unfortunately, I have to continue. So these financial statements should describe the nature of the change. <laughs> well, at this point, you may be asking what the nature of this change might be. Your guess is as good as mine, but I digress at this point. These financial statements should also state the reason for the change. If I knew what the nature of the change was, I could probably figure out what the, why the change was made. I hope someone out there can fill in some of these blanks, because there's a lot of them. There are more things you must list on these financial statements. Oh boy, I'm so excited about this. The next thing you're supposed to disclose is the effect of the change on income before extraordinary items. Like, you know what these extraordinary items is. What is the effect of income and what are these extraordinary items? <laughs> well, paragraph doesn't clarify any of that. But this isn't the only thing you have to disclose on the financial statement. You have to show the effect of the change on income before net income and related per share amounts. Does this paragraph clearly define what a per share amount is? No, <laughs> of course not. Why would it? I will leave, let you read the rest of the paragraph. But this paragraph does reference paragraphs 56 through 65 and paragraphs 93 through 96 of APB opinion number 16. So now you have to go find APB and number 16. You have to read that too. I'll let you read those paragraphs when you have finished watching this video. But well, let's go on. We need to be tortured just a bit more. Let's move on to paragraph 26 of APB Opinion 28. Hopefully somebody will answer these questions and leave some comments below. It starts with an effect of a change in an accounting estimate. What is this effect of a change in, the, in, the, in an accounting period? Well, I wish I knew, but I don't. Whatever this effect of a change in an accounting period is, we have to include a change in the estimated effective annual tax rate. Good. 
wonder what any of that is. What is this estimated effective annual tax rate? Whoa. Take your wildest guess, because I don't know. According to this paragraph, effective a change in an accounting period should be accounted for in the period in which the change in estimate is made. Well, when is this period? Huh. Guess, guess one day we might find out. This opinion clearly states that you should not restate previous reported interim information because you made changes in the estimates. Glad to know that. Why shouldn't you restate previously reported interim information? Well, hopefully somebody will watch this video and tell us. Of course, the paragraph continues with the word but. That's a good word. That means that some reported interim information will be restated. What's the reason for the restatement? The paragraph clearly states that the effect on earnings of a change in estimate made in a current interim period should be reported in the current and subsequent interim periods. How many subsequent interim periods are being referenced in this paragraph? Well, again, I don't know. This paragraph also states that if material in relation to any period presented and should continue to be reported in the interim financial information of the subsequent year for as many periods as necessary to avoid misleading comparison. What are these misleading comparisons? <laughs> this paragraph doesn't explain that. Let's go on with paragraph 26 of APB Opinion 28. Well, it the, the paragraph concludes by referencing paragraph 33 of, of APP Opinion 20. Let me say that again. You've got to go to paragraph 33 of APB opinion number 20 to find out the, more, the rest of it. I'll let you read that paragraph on your own. Going on to paragraph 27 of APB opinion 28. It begins by referencing a change in an accounting principle or a change in an accounting practice. If a change in an accounting principle or practice is adopted in an interim period and this change requires an adjustment for the cumulative effect of the change in to the beginning of the current fiscal year, then something has to happen. What that event is, I don't know. According to the paragraph, this change should be reported in the interim period in the manner similar to that to be followed in the annual report. Well, I'm going to attempt to break this down, but I don't know that I'll succeed. So, you're dealing with a change in an accounting principle or a change in an accounting practice. Okay, so far so good. But this paragraph doesn't specify what accounting principles or accounting practices are being changed. So you have no clue what you're doing. We do know based on this paragraph that these changes are occurring in an interim period. Oh, that's good. So it's not going to be on the annual statement. Is this the first interim period or the last one? This paragraph doesn't specify which interim period this change is occurring in. The adoption of a change in an accounting principle or practice is requiring something. But it doesn't specify what it's requiring. It does specify that it's some kind of an adjustment. It doesn't say what adjustment it's, it's requiring. According to this paragraph, the required adjustment involves the cumulative effect of the accounting principle or practice. But notice how long this sentence actually is. Let's examine the last part of the text carefully. This required adjustment will take place at the beginning of the fiscal year. Where will this change be reported? According to the paragraph, this required adjustment will be reported in the interim period. Which one? Doesn't say. <laughs> Aren't we having fun yet? Then the paragraph specifies how this required adjustment will be reported in the interim period. The manner in which this change will be reported will be similar to that to be followed in the annual report. I regret to say that this paragraph doesn't illustrate any of the statements that I have just mentioned. We aren't done with this paragraph just yet. Of course not. But this paragraph continues. Then, the, then this paragraph details how the cumulative effect of a change in an accounting practice or policy should be calculated in an interim period. Well, but it doesn't show an illustration of this calculation, so we have no idea. You have to determine the effect of the change on the amount of retained earnings. When is this effect determined? It's determined at the beginning of the annual period in which the interim period falls. So this interim period, period is contained inside the annual period that you are examining. I 
where. <laughs> the next thing you will do is measure the period of time between the beginning of the annual period to the interim period in which the change occurs. There's an effect of the change that occurs between the, this beginning period and the interim period that you have encountered. So how do you report this effect? <laughs> well, keep asking yourself that because I don't know the answer. You have to report this change as a determinant of net income. Like, you know what a determinant is. Well, let's try to help you out with that one. The Latin noun terminus is defined as a boundary. So what you're setting up is some kind of a boundary. What is this boundary according to this paragraph? I regret to say this paragraph doesn't specify the boundary, so you have no idea. But the next part of this paragraph does give us a clue. It says that the determinant of net income is, is in the interim period in which the change is made. Woo! So you're making a change in a specific interim period and you're extracting some kind of determinant of net income from this interim period document. Okay. but I wish I had a better explanation. Paragraph 28 of APB Opinion Number 28 recommends that companies adopt any accounting changes during the first interim period of a fiscal year. Otherwise, this process becomes awkward. How does this become awkward? It can obscure the operating results and it can complicate the disclosure of interim financial information. How can this change, how can this change obscure op operating results. Well, again, the paragraph doesn't give an example. It's kind of obscurity. Alright. So, one of these days soon, I'll revisit this little topic and maybe we'll get some answers at long last. And maybe we'll be able to read this a little bit better. In the meantime, I want to thank you for staying tuned because this was kind of fun. We, we learned next to nothing except for the fact that we know what's in there now. But just because we know it's all in all these paragraphs doesn't mean that we are able to translate it out. So we'll see how that goes. All right. I will tell you more in a future video. So I'd like for you to stay tuned.